The term tacit knowing or tacit knowledge is attributed to Michael Polanyi in 1958 in Personal Knowledge. In his later work The Tacit Dimension he made the assertion that we can know more than we can tell. He states not only that there is knowledge that cannot be adequately articulated by verbal means, but also that all knowledge is rooted in tacit knowledge. Tacit knowledge can be defined as skills, ideas and experiences that people have in their minds and are, therefore, difficult to access because it is often not codified and may not necessarily be easily expressed. Chu, 2015. With tacit knowledge, people are not often aware of the knowledge they possess or how it can be valuable to others. Effective transfer of tacit knowledge generally requires extensive personal contact, regular interaction and trust. This kind of knowledge can only be revealed through practice in a particular context and transmitted through social networks. To some extent it is captured when the knowledge holder joins a network or a community of practice. Some examples of daily activities and tacit knowledge are, riding a bike, playing the piano, driving a car, hitting a nail with a hammer, and putting together pieces of a complex jigsaw puzzle. Interpreting a Complex Statistical Equation Chu, 2015. In the field of knowledge management, the concept of tacit knowledge refers to a knowledge which cannot be fully codified. Therefore, an individual can acquire tacit knowledge without language. Apprentices, for example, work with their mentors and learn craftsmanship not through language but by observation, imitation, and practice. The key to acquiring tacit knowledge is experience. Without some form of shared experience, it is extremely difficult for people to share each other's thinking processes. Tacit knowledge has been described as know-how, as opposed to know-that, facts. This distinction is usually taken to date back to a paper by Gilbert Ryle, given to the Aristotelian Society in London in 1945. In this paper Ryle argues against the intellectualist position that all knowledge is knowledge of propositions know that, and the view that some knowledge can only be defined as know-how has therefore, in some contexts, come to be called anti-intellectualist. There are further distinctions, know-why, science, or know-who, networking. Tacit knowledge involves learning and skill but not in a way that can be written down. On this account knowing how or embodied knowledge is characteristic of the expert, who acts, makes judgments, and so forth without explicitly reflecting on the principles or rules involved. The expert works without having a theory of his or her work. He or she just performs skillfully without deliberation or focused attention embodied knowledge represents a learned capability of a human body's nervous and endocrine systems. Sensky 2002 tacit knowledge versus explicit knowledge, although it is possible to distinguish conceptually between explicit and tacit knowledge, they are not separate and discrete in practice. The interaction between these two modes of knowing is vital for the creation of new knowledge.